Here, dead spider. Look at that. Mmm, deliciously rusty. Most experience. Slight modification that some people are probably going to lose their minds on is uh, tapped and drill a stainless steel screw. So that way. 251 foot. So then just that's it, really a quarter turn and a bit of a wiggle. These are all 17 mil. And just nice and easy. Holy banana. Look at the rust on that. Yeah. Rear caliper. Uh, oh my goodness. That's, that's disgusting. Doesn't it look like something that came yeah. out of an old pirate ship? Yes, it looks like an old like an old wheel that hasn't been cleaned for a really long time. Yep, that's the ticket, buddy. Let's take the rear caliper off. Yes. That way we can take the rotor off and see. Yes. And then we can see what's... What condition it's on. Yeah. This is an H7. They've written V on this, but it's a 7 as far as the size. And then I've just got a half inch adapter because mine are 3 eighths. You want to seat it as snugly as you possibly can in there and then we're going to be pushing down in this instance <laughs> there we go uh pro tip these rear calipers off of the bmw m5 are the same exact caliper as the 535 i 535 is um the bolt pattern for the carrier is apparently the same as an E34. In the event that you're going to put E34, some people want to upgrade. Uh, on the M5, I mean, you could do it if you're absolutely, absolutely adamant that you need vented rotors in the back. But the other side of the coin is you're adding weight. So E34 rear calipers, any of them will fit. I'm going to flip around to the front, and in doing so, we get to take a look at the front end, where we've got this thing here, this little carrier clip, it clips on, so you just pop that off on one side, see it's got a little bitty tooth, little toothy tooth there, little snaggle tooth, and it's the same on both sides, so that just comes off. So that's done. Put that on the side. And uh, really, needs a little bit of wiggling because as you can see, this looks like some kind of ancient rusted bucket of rust. Um, the other thing that I like to do, I'll pick up these really, really short bungee cords from any hardware store. Um, they're excellent for holding calipers because you don't have to go very far with them. They have little to no stretch. So if I was gonna tilt up, right? I'll just keep, all right. Let's just do one thing at a time, yeah? All right, so that comes off of there. Ooh, these are haggard. Mmm, deliciously rusty. Yes. Most experience. The, the inside one has a clip. There's a little bitty clip clip on the back, and that's what goes into the back of the piston. What I will do is I will simply put the hook on the gap of the caliper, and I can go, I can get it really, really far out of my way, like just go up and then that's it. And because it's short, yeah, it's not gonna flex, it's not gonna swing, keeps the pressure off of this thing. I'm convinced. Are you convinced? Yes. Excellent. 100%. All right. Now we got to take the carrier off this thing. Okay, go. What is that getting stuck on? Is that the Is there an e-brake thingy in there? And for that, we're going back. Yep, I can see the thing. We've got these two 
We got these two bolts. Yeah. Prior to that, ooh, yeah. look at that. Mm, that's that's some good, yeah. good crispy wiring. Yeah. This is all gonna get rewrapped with some uh, tech wrap. We'll cover that later when we're rebuilding things. Um, so first things first, this ABS sensor has got to come off. Alrighty. Too small. Hee <laughs> hee. Just right. Where's my three eighths? Yeah. That's enough. That's enough for that. I mean, I sometimes I use power tools. The majority of the time, I just prefer loosening things by hand. There we go. See that little, little twisty twist. Oh yeah, now you're good. All right, so there's that thingy, little toothy sensor. Um, it's got a bit of nasty stuff on it, so probably end up cleaning that off, getting the rust off of it. It's got this interesting little V uh, grooved set on the top, and I think that's for yeah, that's for reading the notches. And the notches look like super dirty, which is probably why. The ABS doesn't do nothing for no one on the wishbone. We'll deal with it once we're at the wishbone. And then I've got crud everywhere. So these two look like bolts. Yes. Not 14. 17s would be way too good. 15. 15 millis. So let's just... Anything. Anything will do. All right. 15 mil, and then just... Oh my goodness, gonna have to stand up for this one. All right. Try to use all of your body weight, just centralize it and go nice and slow, and really, that is all you need. That comes out, we're gonna follow my rules. My rules are, you take a bolt off, you put a bolt on. Now that carrier is gonna keep these guys with them. This is obviously gonna need cleaned up, but we've got a rebuild episode. Or basically, it might just be all one episode and we do everything at once. Um, okay. And that's it. See? Just enough to break it. I must break you. I will break you. If he dies, he dies. There we go. So that's that. H5 nut. Is this going to come off? That looks like it's just going to come off. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, hello. Wow. Wow. Okay. So we'll move back a, a skoosh. And we'll just go. There it is. So that's a big honking rusted mess of a rotor. Uh, these are all super grooved out. Um, no wonder it was driving like all weird and squirrely. Uh, this is all scratched up to no end. And yeah, I think these are original. 30 years, good on ya. Do I need to change these rear hops? So that's that. You know what, they're identical to the 535s, the 528s, all the, most of the E28s, yeah, I think all the E28s, E34s, uh, there's a small variation in the hub for E39s, but the system, this gearing sprocket, and the springs, and these, like, captive, uh, bolts here are all the same. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna see if I can get this spring out like that. Use one of these hooky thingies. And uh, these are two different size springs. So 
Uh-huh, there we go. So this is the bottom one. It's shorter and it's smaller, which is why you start at the bottom. The top one's the bigger one. That's the monster. Uh, so that comes out first. And then you've still got... You've got these H5s that are the same as the screw that you took off for the hub. Yeah. And for the sensor in the back here, you can actually still see it a little bit. And the way that these work, these, and you can see there's a spring on them. And apparently, you just turn them like 90 degrees. See that? 90 degrees, and they just come out. Nice and easy. They've got a little, uh, I don't know, hammerhead on the end. Yeah? So that's for one. One shoe. And we'll swirly whirly on over to the other side. <clears throat> and you can see there's another one down here. Swirly whirly. So. And because it's on a spring, you can just kind of. You can just kind of futz around with it a little bit. Yeah, like that. And again. 90 degrees, Oop, pops right out, nice and easy. Um, I don't know if it'll translate, but on the head of the bolt, on the head of the bolt, they have a line. And that line is in line with the direction of the hammerhead. So when you go to put it in, you know which way is the long edge. Yeah. All right, so now that we've got those two out, essentially, we have freedom to, uh, yeah, let's go a little bit slow here. So this, this, the whole thing is basically just wibbly wobbly now. This little sprocketed gear thingy actually separates see so if you pull a little bit like that see how that works yeah and this little sprickety sprockety wibbly wobblies and it comes out right and pinches my finger to death see that so there's still a bit of spring tension in it yeah so this is a threaded it's threaded here. This, this toothed, see how it's like that? So these slot into the, uh, into the spine of the pad. Yeah. And it's toothed. So this moves, this slides off. That just slides off. So that needs to be greased, right? And this sprocketed thingamajigger bobber doodle, I'm gonna try not to move it very much, but this is, Right, so that's 180. That's back to where it started. So that's threaded. So that actually controls the amount of tension that gets pushed out on the pads. So you just get it, uh, you use the diameter of the hub on the inside as your leverage point. So you can bend it, right? And you can, you can bend it back and you get enough to clear the hole. Yeah, and then it's just super easy after that. Because that basically wants to fall off. Yep, and it has. And this guy over here wants to, he wants to fall off too. And, and as such, he's done it. Where the cable comes out, which is up here, that's the cable assembly. Yeah, that's what does the work. Is that this tooth on there is, is what comes up on the top yeah so that ends up up here it looks right is that originally it looks like that because you got all this pressure on everything the second you release everything everything wants to just go haywire so this slides out from here and as such right it won't release completely as such there's this pin and it pulls out like that and it'll probably fall out while you're doing stuff. 
Does this want to come out? It does want to come out. So that comes out with a little bit of persuasion. Oh, she's about to. She's about to jump out. She's about to jump out. If I just literally give it the smallest little wiggle and up, oh, that's it. So that pin has come out. So let's just remember the orientation here. Yeah, that's going to be facing that way because it's gonna wanna swivel this way and get attached. All right, so that's that, and that's that, and that pin comes out, and that comes out of that. When you put them out one notch, you figure it out when you're doing it. Just apply it to these metal clips, and just bend on them slowly, and just get them to release some of the pressure that's on this uh, that's on this shielding for the cable. The second one, just get some angle on that and slowly pull it down. Yeah, is that now that this cable's been released, yeah, it's completely loose. And when you release it, see how it wants to hang outside of there? And that is the key to getting it out of the back of this hub because it looks daunting you're like oh it must have some kind of but that's it so you just literally pull that out because it, the clamps are no longer holding it so you pull that out and route it however way you want to get it out of your way for the wishbone and that metal shielding that has the sleeve that sleeve has a jacket inside and that jacket is where it holds this whole component in there patented double spanner method. Let's see if we can. Oh. <laughs> that way when you go to sit in front of your car, because it's one of those things where you can lay down underneath your car and you just stare up and your eyes start to roll back in your head and you're like, wow, there's all this stuff and all these components and everything. Brett. Yeah. You'll never be able to you'll never get anything lost. So that comes right off of there. Yeah. This plate is starting to get super loose now, which means I think the hub has to actually come off before this plate comes off in its entirety. So that's going to be another thing that we're going to deal with a little bit later.